To slow down the further spreading of COVID-19, a statewide curfew is in effect in California. The question is, how does the public navigate it? Amid a pandemic, holiday season not only brings out the excitement, but also the concern if you choose to travel by plane. Success rates of the coronavirus vaccine are high. What comes next before they reach the public? Update news starts now. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at San Jose State University, your source for what's happening with a fresh perspective on today's issues. You're watching Update News. Welcome to Update News. I'm Jennifer Hernandez. And I'm Jasmine King. Our reporters are standing by live in San Jose, Santa Cruz, Turlock, and Los Angeles. Breaking news, Governor Gavin Newsom just a few minutes ago announced a three-week stay-at-home order for most of California, including the Bay Area. Among the new restrictions, playgrounds, salons, dining areas will be off limits. Food takeout will still be allowed while hotels will be open for critical infrastructure support. Religious institutions will now be limited to outdoor services. Counties are already operating under a curfew. Nicole Abelar is live with more. Nicole? Jennifer, the stay-at-home order announced today comes on top of the curfew that has people off the streets between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Santa Clara County has the highest number of coronavirus cases in the San Francisco Bay Area. Just today, we had 760 new cases, far shattering any previous record by over 200 cases. These numbers were from people who were tested within the past week. This pandemic is like a high-speed train, and our projections tell us that we are on target to derail by around the third week of December if we don't apply brakes right now with all our collective might. I think at this point it's whatever we need to do to keep those numbers down until we can get some sort of solution to the thing in general. Health officials in Santa Clara County urge residents to comply with precautionary restrictions. Nevertheless, the broader message is simple, and that is that we urge everyone to stay home to the greatest extent that you can. The Sacramento Police Department says it will not be enforcing the curfew. Fresno County is relying on residents to follow the curfew voluntarily. Police officers in Benicia are relying on an educational-based approach to enforce the state-ordered curfew. And you're not looking to um, cite people or stop people in the, you know, who are out and about after the, um, the 10 p.m. curfew hour, as you, as you will. State and county officials are tightening directives to limit the spread of the virus. Critics of the curfew have said they are targeting people who have parties. They also say it will hinder already struggling businesses. But other people say the curfew will help lower the spread of the virus. I think what happens is when people go to bars and they drink and they socialize, they have a tendency to get looser with the masks and the social distancing. Health officials say they are not making these decisions lightly. These are extraordinarily, extraordinarily painful and difficult decisions, but it is a matter of life and death and we must slow this train or it will derail. The stay-at-home order announced today are based on the number of available beds in the intensive care units. The new curfew by Governor Gavin Newsom has affected people in many ways. In the Central Valley, Lupe has more about the curfew affected in the city of Modesto. Lupe? Even before the new restrictions announced today, and some businesses in downtown Turlock are still going strong after the curfew announced by Governor Newsom. Downtown Turlock is now empty and less impacted after the new curfew ordered by Governor Newsom for most California counties, such as San Jose that have re-entered into the Purple Sage, the most restrictive in the tier. Trends continue. We're going to have to take much more dramatic arguably drastic action, including taking a look at those purple tiered counties. The curfew has brought many questions regarding how it will affect businesses. It is usually we get about 10,000 people to, for the parade. So we get a lot of traffic from there. So I think that's going to affect us somehow. Businesses in Turlock are expected to follow the new guidelines on their own. I've not heard of anybody getting any notices. After the new curfew, many downtown businesses that had reopened are now closed. 
Only a few downtown businesses, such as Exhale Hookah Lounge, continue to be open. Since we do have to close down a little bit earlier, it if well, you could say it affects a little bit of that time. Turlock Police Department will not enforce the current curfew. He hasn't actually. Uh, sheriff doesn't care. Um, they pretty pretty much law enforcement says, and they we've talked to them and they posted it on their social media that they would not be citing people for for curfew or being past curfew. And the new curfew order has been enforced differently in the Central Valley depending on the city. I know that other cities that they are pretty much more strict on it, but Turlock's been pretty cool about it. So. There is expected a rise in COVID cases during the holiday season in the Stanislaus County. The curfew has become more restrictive as of today, and we will see how that will affect businesses in downtown Turlock that have been going strong. Live in Turlock, Guadalupe Mictio, Update News. Holidays without family are hard, especially during a global pandemic. Experts are worried Americans will continue to travel during this winter. Fernanda Del Velasco spoke with recent travelers about their air travel experiences during COVID-19. Fernanda? Jasmine, the U.S. saw a spike of COVID cases after Thanksgiving weekend. Now, experts are left wondering what will happen during this winter's holidays. After Thanksgiving weekend, COVID-19 cases are at an all-time high as U.S. airports mark their busiest period since March. Experts are worried people will continue to travel with more holidays right around the corner. After getting married in Pakistan in January, Marisha Bibi has traveled back and forth to see her long-distance husband. In fact, I traveled in January, and then the pandemic kind of happened in March-ish, and then... Uh, I traveled again during the pandemic. Bibi planned to travel again for this holiday season, but after her last flight, she's not sure when she'll see her husband again. I heard from multiple people that um, there was social distancing on the plane, right? Like, you know, you skip a seat and then sit down. That's what I heard. <laughs> when I got on it, there was no social distancing. Like Bibi, Paulina Celis is no stranger to being away from her loved ones. After her mother passed away in Mexico, Celis was unsure if traveling was the smartest idea. I even bought my ticket. I got my ma uh, N95. I did like a quarantine before, but it's still there's a risk. Being away from her loved ones was a hard decision she had to make. And so rushing to see the family right now, I think it can wait. I think this can show us that we can be close uh, and not necessarily physically close. Experts are worried about what the future may look like. A travel survey suggests that Americans continue to plan to travel during this holiday season. An AAA travel survey found that only 57% of Americans say they wouldn't travel during these holidays. Juanita Vasquez is a flight attendant for United Airlines. She knows what air traveling looks like during the pandemic. You know, if you if you cannot fly, don't fly. If you have to fly, just use all the precautions. Wear a mask. Make sure you wash your hands. Stay seated and listen to your flight attendants. Listen to your flight crew. Both passengers and crew are advising people to stay home. Back to their home country. So if you are traveling or anyone is traveling, just you know, be safe. That's it. It's so one of the ways to show how much we love the ones that we love is taking care of them. After seeing the pandemic did not stop many Americans from celebrating Thanksgiving, experts like Dr. Anthony Fauci ask Americans to please stay home this winter. Live in San Jose, Fernando de Velasco, Update News. The advisory committee to the Centers for Disease Control is recommending that the first people to receive the coronavirus vaccine should be healthcare workers and people living in long-term care facilities. At least three vaccines are expected to be offered, manufactured by AstraZeneca, Moderna, and Pfizer. The drug makers have moved quickly to seek approval and the first vaccines could be given before the end of this month. While not Americans may be willing to roll up their sleeves and get the vaccine, Update News spoke with two who are. I think that it's a good thing. I think that we should have a COVID-19 vaccination. I, I'm glad that all these medical companies are in the process. Their trials are even on the verge of releasing it to the public. 
I plan on taking it whenever I am able to, because I know like in the beginning, it's probably only going to be accessible to people who need it the most. The vaccines will need to be given in two doses. Side effects include milder symptoms of coronavirus. It is flu season in America, and due to the similarity of the symptoms between the flu and coronavirus, health experts are recommending the public to get their flu shot. Kenya Caballero talked to some health experts about the importance of the flu. Kenya, what did they tell you? Yes, Maine, they told me the importance of getting the flu shot in order to avoid higher rates of hospitalization during this pandemic. Health officials say it's especially important for the public to get flu shots this year to reduce the impact on healthcare systems. Santa Clara County is offering free flu shots with the hope to inform the community of the benefits and clear any misconceptions. Many people may imagine that if they're young and healthy, they don't need a flu shot and nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, college students and other people who are young and healthy do need a flu shot. Some people resist getting a flu shot because they don't trust the effectiveness, but some doctors say that's wrong. The flu shot's um, a very safe, uh, generally speaking, uh, injection. It's, it's not 100%, but it's a lot better. Even if you get the flu after having the vaccine, doctors say the illness will be less severe. It's very important for people to be limiting any flu, not just for themselves, but people that they're giving in the community. For some people, getting the flu shot is more important than for others. I decided to get the flu shot to protect my family. I have a newborn and a two-year-old brother at home, and I don't want to put them at risk. Center for Disease and Control recommends most people aged six months and older to get a flu shot. It is especially important for essential workers and people at risk for severe illness from COVID-19. Seniors, people with severe medical conditions such as diabetes and asthma. Before getting a flu shot, it is important that people make sure they have no COVID symptoms. And for people concerned about paying for the flu vaccine. For those who don't have insurance, uh, or anyone who finds it more convenient, you're welcome to come down and join us here at the Santa Clara County Fairgrounds on Saturdays where we offer a free flu shot. It's better to be safe than sorry if you think that it takes a little too long or you don't have too much time on your day. If you're interested in getting a flu shot, you can go to the Santa Clara County Fairgrounds in San Jose every Saturday from 10 to 4 until December 5th or contact your health provider. Live in San Jose, Kenya Caballero, Update News. The number of pedestrian fatalities in San Jose is growing. The city is creating measures for pedestrians and safety measures for pedestrians and bicycle riders. Already at the beginning of December, the number of pedestrian fatalities in San Jose has reached more than 20, on pace to meet or even surpass the record total of 29 from all of last year. The city is working to create safer ways to walk and bike ride. San Jose is taking part in a worldwide plan called Vision Zero. This includes signs, new bike lanes, and safer walkways. So uh, in San Jose, we created the Vision Zero Action Plan. Um, this is an update. So San Jose adopted Vision Zero as a um, policy goal in 2015. At the start of Vision Zero, there was a decline in the number of pedestrian fatalities. Five years in, and the numbers have now doubled. The cause of the rise can be linked to distracted driving and distracted walking. Not following traffic laws as a pedestrian or a driver has also added to the increase. The city's efforts can already be seen in locations like Willow Street and South Almaden Avenue. This is an example of a quick build project and the focus of the Vision Zero Action Plan is to do quick build projects like this in more locations on, um, on the priority safety corridors, which is the place that we see most fatal and severe injuries. Improving pedestrian safety goes beyond the city, but to the community as well. As the year comes to a close, the number continues to rise. The city's efforts with Vision Zero will continue to develop into next year. More people are eating at home these days. People aren't going to restaurants as much, but according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they are cooking, snacking, and consuming more at home now. It's Fat City at grocery stores during this time of pandemic. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, $36 billion of businesses that used to go to restaurants is now going to grocery stores. I think their sales are actually really been high rocket. Um, I mean, people are buying like crazy, so. And I don't understand, because I'm like, where are they going to hold all that food at? 
it's going to expire. With more demand for food, the supply decreases and in turn makes food prices go up. All the groceries have gone up really bad. And it depends on what store you go to. Usually food co or costless is usually the most economical place to go to. In a research report done by the Small Business News Data and How to Guide the Manifest, people continue to shop in grocery stores, but they limit how frequently they shop each month by stocking up on more at one time. I try to eat out less just because it's a hassle. I mean, there's not much to do. So I do kind of eat more at home. According to the USDA, food prices have jumped up nearly 6% in the last year. That's nearly the biggest jump in 50 years. Another thing is do your math. It may say that it's three for, you know, a dollar fifty, but if you look at the actual price, it's actually the same price if you would buy them individually. For some farmers who grow food, the pandemic has caused some misfortune. Some of their laborers are out sick and government funding has been cut back. Right after our harvest and everything else, uh, we're run by the state, so our, our, uh, our farm actually took a pretty big hit. We got um, some budget cuts and where we can't. According to Supermarket News, overall sales in food and beverage stores climbed more than 12% in the first half of this year. Now we have student meteorologist Joshua Gilman to give us the highlights of what weather events from the entire year. Joshua? This year, 2020, has been a historical year Weather-wise, the U.S. experienced the deadliest tornado season in more than 10 years, with tornadoes popping up throughout the southern states. This wrecked many small communities, and it made life even harder as it happened right as the pandemic broke out. This year, we also saw a record hurricane season. 2020 had the highest number of tropical cyclones, passing the last record in 2005. The 2020 Atlantic hurricane season was the most active Atlantic hurricane season ever recorded. The Gulf Coast of the United States was battered by seven named storms. Hurricane Ada thrashed Florida twice, leaving tens of thousands without electricity and flooding beach communities. And Louisiana saw at least five storms this year, including Zeta, which in late October destroyed parts of New Orleans. In August, Hurricane Laura made landfall on the state's coast as a Category 4 storm with 150 mile per hour winds destroying office buildings, a sky bridge, trees, and power lines. Scientists are still doing research, but it really points towards climate change being responsible for this increased frequency and perhaps intensity of tropical cyclones. As we approach the end of this year, the West Coast, especially Northern California, experience a seemingly apocalyptic time with orange and smoky skies for nearly a whole month straight. A lightning storm in mid-August caused 31 fires to ignite and created a fire epidemic that spewed out of control. The August complex fire ripped through the Mendocino National Forest and it was the most destructive wildfire in California history, burning over 1 million acres, reaching nearly 1.1 million acres. When we come back, Jocelyn Aguirre will be here with a look at arts and entertainment. Voluntary food programs are a free service and a gesture of goodwill in Santa Cruz. And hop in your cars and fasten your seatbelts. Christmas is arriving on time at a park in San Jose. Fall 2020 semester is coming to an end. Graduates are now without in any in-person ceremonies. 
Nicole Abelar has more. Nicole? Jennifer, the coronavirus continues to affect fall graduates. The year 2020 is leaving both spring and fall graduates without a celebration for all of their hard work. Fall 2020 graduates did not anticipate that the coronavirus would continue to impact their graduation ceremonies. I was hoping by now it would be at least a little better that maybe we could do like small department um, graduations, but um, unfortunately not. SJSU commencement has no choice but to postpone in-person graduation ceremonies once again. I still thought it could happen. But as I started the semester, it was in the back of my mind, like, it's not going to happen. It's going to have to be virtual again. Um, we still are standing by not making this a real ceremony because we really do want people to um, still come back and walk. Some spring 2020 graduates are still looking for a job amidst the pandemic, creating fear for fall 2020 graduates. I always heard about other people being nervous about not finding a job, but now we have to go through it virtually. With California's unemployment at an all-time low, graduates are afraid they will not have luck finding a job. So a lot of places are not even hiring right now, so I feel like it's just a lot more stressful. The SJSU Career Center is aware of the challenges graduates will face. We changed our um, guidelines now and we continue to support graduates at no cost for a year post-graduation. Historically, once pandemics get better, the job industry is in need of new workers. Use this period to make sure you're ready for when that growth begins to happen. I'm mentally prepared and now I have to physically prepare um, myself like with resumes and the cover letters. SJC Commencement hopes to have in-person ceremonies for graduates who have been affected by the virus. Nicole Albalar, Update News. And now we have Jocelyn Aguirre with a look at arts and entertainment. So what's this we're hearing about free groceries? Yeah, it looks like the community is doing all that they can because uh, there are actually one in every 127 people homeless in Santa Cruz, many of whom struggle to find clean, warm clothes and a hot meal. But some community members have taken it upon themselves to do something. Danny Way is live in Santa Cruz with the story. Jocelyn, a small group of concerned Santa Cruz citizens have felt it necessary to help out the people that so many others have overlooked. While many people spend their time off from work relaxing, this group of dedicated community members spends their free time helping the less fortunate. It's called Simply of Service, and the head of this small organization, Juan Dominguez, remembers what it was like to be struggling. I remember honestly being on the streets and just like partying and spending my last dime on an alcohol beverage and just like wishing uh, that somebody would just offer me some food anywhere. Dominguez says he tries to do what he can with the small crew of people who also just want to help. Um, there's about 12 of us in the group, um, but obviously everyone has their lives, you know what I mean? They have stuff going on, kids, school, work, so um, they can help when they can. This isn't a major nonprofit, just some people doing what they think is right for their community, although they would like to see it turn into that. The goal is to be doing it seven days a week. Um, to be honest, the goal is to be a nonprofit. But until then, this small group of people take time out of their busy schedule to help the less fortunate, even if that means spending their own money. I don't get paid at all for this. I do not make any profit. Some of it even comes out of my own wallet um, that I can't get to the donations sometimes or donations aren't flowing, so we do use stuff out of our own wallet. Simply of services, small sacrifice could mean the world to some people. It means the world to me, it fills my belly and it keeps me warm. Catherine Lichty says her predicament has had its ups and downs and any help is much appreciated. Some of the people are nice and some of them aren't, so it's rough. I've never been homeless before like this, so it's rough for me. People like Catherine are the people the Simply of Service crew focus on. Those who are down on their luck and just need a little something to get them through the day. And also the joy on people's face that like when they see a hot, fresh meal, it's so dope.
Dominguez says people have been very generous with their donations and their time. He says Simply a Service has been receiving more donations and members because of their constant posts on social media. Live in Santa Cruz, Danny White, Update News. Grace Baptist Church is the location of a recent tragedy. Two people died and three others were injured. A homeless man is in custody in connection with the attacks. However, we do have some good going on here. Feed the Block is a volunteer program that takes place at Grace Baptist Church in the heart of downtown San Jose. The community comes together here to literally feed the block. Making food such as sausage, pancakes, eggs, and bacon, this community comes together to cook, package, and distribute food to those in need. We really saw a need to like reach out into the community. Um, that was an aspect that was really lacking, I think, in this immediate area. With a large homeless population in downtown San Jose, the organization was created with them in mind. Individuals came together to create Feed the Block SJ, and it has been growing ever since. Distributing about a thousand meals a week, the group meets weekly just outside of SJSU at Grace Baptist Church. Inside, they make food and care packages. The founder, Lou Dimes, created this weekly brunch as a way to provide a nice meal to anyone in need. When it, basically, you just want to provide the, the houseless community with like a meal that's really good, that we put yeah. some love in. Like, I, would eat, I eat this myself. The group meets every Friday and Saturday and has developed a small community of weekly volunteers that continues to grow. And it's really exciting to see new volunteers every week rolling through. You know, we need as much help as we can get. After the recent tragedy at Grace Baptist Church, Feed the Block continues to provide food and a safe place for those in need. If you're interested in helping out Feed the Block, check out their Instagram page at FeedTheBlockSJ. You have the option to sign up to volunteer or send in a donation. Christmas is around the corner. Due to the coronavirus this year, the traditional Christmas in the park will have to be different. Kenya Caballero joins us live from San Jose. Kenya, how does the park look this year? Jocelyn, this year the park won't have the traditional fair or street vendors. Instead, the park will host a colorful drive-by. Instead of having our traditional walk-through free event downtown, we're having a drive-through paid event at History Park. A tunnel of lights is the start of an adventure, followed by snowflakes and colorful lights scattered all over the park. The Christmas in the Park Organization Committee came up with this new design over the summer and decided to charge for the experience. Tickets range between $10 to $40 a car. Um, we knew that going to a paid model was something that was going to be necessary and us, for us to be able to put, up, put on an event. This year, the park has 300 trees from different organizations and the community. Each tree has a particular different theme that makes them unique and sets them apart from one another. Tara Tabrasol is part of the Valley Homeless Street Medicine team. This year, their Christmas tree had a special theme. Uh, our tree um, is has a medical theme, so you'll see a bunch of pink gloves behind me. Uh, the decision was taken with the intention to recognize frontline staff, but things have not been easy because of the pandemic. This year, the number of volunteers dropped. There's four full-time staff and then we've hired another 10 people. Minsky said that most of the event decorations were put up with around 10 people. Volunteers are excited to see their hard work paid off. It's such a wonderful opportunity to see the park, but also it's lit up. The lights were professionally designed through the years to create a memorable experience. It's about a mile and a half journey and it should take anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes. For those interested in attending the park, all tickets must be purchased in advance online. There will be no tickets being sold at the event. In San Jose, Kenya Caballero, update news. And that does it for arts and entertainment. I just love Christmas. I wish I could just enjoy the lights and, you know, the music all year round. Definitely. I can't wait for the holidays. When we come back, we'll have the weather forecast. And we'll take a look at the latest Mountain West game. With the tightening health protocols, the college football season is up in the air. Update news will be right back.
Hello. Or Santa Clara County is temporarily prohibiting contact sports. So the 49ers are practicing in Tempe, Arizona, and hold games there. The San Jose football team the will be playing in Hawaii top. this Stop weekend. The, the Spartans had to cancel their last two games against Fresno and Boise State because of virus and the op opposing teams. Tomorrow's game was supposed to be played in San Jose. The team has been practicing at a high school field in Santa Cruz this week. The university is hosting a virtual crowd fundraising for helping low-income families with online learning. Organizers say because of lack of resources, families are experiencing inequality in distance learning. The goal? Raise $10,000 for purch purchasing educational kits and t-shirts for families in central San Jose. The hands-on educational kits give kids access to scientific and environmental activities that they normally wouldn't have from standard courses. Opening up the door like for like the first time for the kids to just try a new experience, it like opens more opportunities for the future. Donors can participate in the event anytime throughout December by entering the website power.sjsu.edu. Now we have student meteorologists Joshua Gilman, live with the five-day forecast. Joshua? Up in Lake Tahoe, it is going to be dry this upcoming weekend. This is due to a high-pressure system along the entire west coast, which creates drier and warmer conditions. Temperatures during the week are still cool with highs in the 40s. They should warm slightly by the weekend with highs into the low 50s near lake level. Currently, conditions are too warm for any snow formation even at the top parts of the mountains. Going over to the Bay Area now, the weather will be quite mild. This is due once again to that high pressure system moving along the entire west coast. The skies will be sunny and the air will be crisp. Now, going into our five-day forecast, in Santa Cruz, their high temperatures will mainly be in the upper 60s and the lows will continue to be chilly in the low 40s. In San Francisco, the high temperatures will be in the mid 60s and low temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. Over in Oakland, the high temperatures will be in the mid 60s and low temperatures in the lower 40s. Finally, in San Jose, the high temperatures are going to mainly be in the upper 60s and the low temperatures will be in the low 40s and upper 30s. The chilliest night will be on Monday at about 38 degrees. All right, everyone, let's hope we get as much rain and snow possible this month and enjoy the upcoming holiday season. And now for a look at SJSU's upcoming events. Starting Wednesday, December 9th, Spartans can join the MLK Library staff virtually for coffee and tea breaks with your library. These virtual meetings will be available for students who need help with study strategies for final exams and will be available until December 15th. And if you'd like to take a musical study break, you can join the SJSU Jazz Orchestra for Cool Yule Jazz on December 9th at 7.30 p.m. These are just a couple of events you can enjoy from the comfort of your home. And that does it for this week's edition of Update News. For all of us here, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next semester.